Welcome back. So in this episode, I'm going to be talking about uh, extremists and how they're actually the ones who do the most damage to causes and, and prevent them from moving forward. Uh, so earlier today, I was watching a video uh, talking about an individual who was actually, I believe it was in Portland, was shot uh, and uh, celebrated by, as they say, Black Lives Matter supporters. And so the reason I'm talking about this is because people... Um, when they're looking at something in a, from an, emotion, an emotional spectrum, they're not going to look at it uh, necessarily objectively. They're going to look at it from the standpoint of um, their pain. They're going to think irrationally, as I've discussed in other videos. They're going to be thinking um, that this is somebody who's trying to hurt them or hurt their cause, and so they think that it's actually good for the cause. Um, and I think it's really important for people on every uh every issue on every subject on every discussion of, of black lives matter or blue lives matter or whatever um to be honest with something and again to have consistent convictions in order to support your cause um because i think that the the extremists are hurting black lives matter right now um because if if you watched uh the people's reaction after uh george floyd um almost unanimously everyone was supporting um george floyd and the fact that he was um unjustly murdered um, but that's the thing is that so you had these peaceful protests going on and a lot of people supported it. A lot of people were behind it and encouraging people to get out and, and speak against these injustices. Um, but then rioters started taking over and looters started taking over. And those actions were justified by a lot of people um, saying that it was this, that there's no right way to protest. And, and, and again, people need to realize that just because someone says they're a part of your cause or they're doing this because of a cause doesn't mean they're in fact doing that. Um, if, if you look at it, you know, this, this person being shot just because, um, just in the video, and again, something might come out that, that debunks this, but as of now, the individual was shot, um, was simply shot because they were a Trump supporter. And so again, you know what, you see people um, making these attacks against uh, Kyle, I think Rittenhouse is his name. And, and if you watch the video, um, it, it's tough to watch just because of, of the intensity. But if you watch the video and you just replace him with a Black Lives Matter supporter and say that the people that were surrounding him were were uh, Trump supporters, um, you know, I think a lot of people would see the justification in his actions, him trying to defend himself. Um, but you have this other individual who's on the other side of the, the aisle of the discussion um, just getting gunned down simply because of his support. He didn't provoke anything. He didn't aggress to, towards anyone. Um, and so it's really important to make this distinction because I'm afraid that if, if we don't act, if we don't speak out against these, these evils in the name of Black Lives Matter, then it's become becoming more and more um, delegitimized. It's becoming more and more discredited um, because, as I discussed earlier, months and months ago, um, after, after George Floyd was murdered, um, that, that, you know, I think that this is an opportunity for us to come together. I, I supported the statement Black Lives Matter because as I saw it and as I discussed it with people, that wasn't a statement of uh, more value. And, and that's, I've seen plenty of Black Lives Matter supporters who have said that this isn't about, you know, being pro-black is not being anti-white, um, which I can, I can appreciate, I agree with. But now you're seeing um, people taking action and violence um, in the support of Black Lives Matter and, and saying that, that, that that essentially because someone's a Trump supporter, their lives don't matter. And again, so that's debunking the very statement people are making, saying um, that, you know, because to me, I think Black Lives Matter is another way of actually saying all lives matter. Um, and, and I'm not saying that people that use that term all lives matter are always using it in a proper way. But I think whatever statement you're supporting, it's important to denounce the extremists. It's important to denounce evil that's caused in, in the name of your cause. Because if you don't, um, you're just going to discredit what you're trying to say. Um, and that's really what it is, is the number one thing is that it discredits the cause. It makes people think that, that anybody supporting this is, is a source of evil. Anybody who's supporting Black Lives Matter um, is, is, a pro, is approving uh, of this extremely negative and hostile and hateful behavior. And so that's why it's so important to denounce it. And it's also, not, it's also important to denounce it just for the individual as yourself. Because I think that's why a lot of people... Um, ignore the evil that is there. And, you know, I think well, that's why a lot of people, you know, I've discussed um, racial issues or I've had people discuss racial issues with me out here in Montana. And it's interesting because um, it was a couple years back, I had an individual telling me 
that that um, that racism didn't exist, and I'm just sitting there thinking like, you're a white guy in Montana, and unless you're part of a racist group, you're not necessarily going to see it. Um, and so it was just this thing where he was, you know, speaking from his perspective, and I don't think he meant anything hateful by it. But again, it's those kind of of, of ignorant statements that are going to cause damage to the legitimacy of, of what there are issues with. You know, if if you're going to support um, you know, victims of injustices, you have to make sure that they're actually unjust. You know, there was one incident in Detroit uh, a few weeks ago, I think, where an um, officer showed up to uh, arrest an individual who's had a warrant out for his arrest, and the individual's buddy pulled a gun out on the police and shot at them, and the police returned, fired, and killed uh, the individual. And then they protested that. And so it's just one of those things where how can you, you're delegitimizing your cause if, if you're actually accusing injustices where i'm sorry but i think that, that was just you know if an officer can't fire back when fired upon when is it ever okay i mean it's just one of those things where um that's that's just not consistent that's not consistent convictions because there are incidences where, where unarmed people are being gunned down and so you know i can completely support that as injustices and that's something that needs to stop and that we need to come together and, and agree upon um, but if we're just going to blanketly cover, you know, like I said, I, I made a, a video just about not supporting a group, but supporting people. You know, if someone's a, a victim of injustice, they're a victim of injustices. It shouldn't matter whether or not that they're black or white or Asian or Hispanic or whatever. If, if they're a victim, they're a victim. And so it's just really important because, like I said, I, I really feel like if we don't denounce the, these evils and, and remove them and say they're not a part of the Black Lives Matter movement, they're not a part of that statement, then it's going to become less and less credible. And in, in the future, I, I, you know, it just, it makes me sad because it's just like, like I said, I feel like, you know, the, you know, in, in, from a sense of religion, I think that the, the, the worst people for religion are the false prophets. They're the people who are saying that they're a part of religion, that they're religious leaders, and then they act extremely against their own convictions, against their own values, which again, is just going to discredit, um, you know, people's view on that. You know, I think a lot of people I've talked to who, I want to say they're anti-religious, but they're not religious or they despise uh, organized religion and so forth. A lot of that root is based on people seeing the hypocritical behavior of, of religious leaders. And so, I mean, I would say the same thing uh, with these causes is if you don't denounce these evil acts that are done in the name of a cause that you support, um, then you're you're discrediting your cause. You're allowing it to become less and less um, validated, and so it's just important for that. Like I said, for for the cause, but also for the individual, because like I said, is with the individual, if you defend unjustifiable acts, you're going to constantly have to. It's it's going to be, uh, you know, you're going to be mentally sleeping with one eye open, because. You're, you're justifying something that isn't just, and so you're going to constantly have to manufacture reasons why it was just, because it's just one of those things where one of my favorite expressions is the truth does not fear um, investigation. It does not fear uh, re reviewing it, because it's the truth. It's one of those things where if, um, and I'm not, not saying this as a blanketed slate, if someone is um, resistant to being interviewed or, or investigated or something, just because I think a lot of us don't like to be questioned. I don't think a lot of us like have our integrity question. Um, but, but if you make a statement and then somebody, you know, wants to talk to you about it, wants to debate you, um, and then you can't, you just verbally attack them. You just accost them and, and prevent them from, from speaking. It's likely that it's not necessarily that your side is completely wrong just because of that act, but you certainly are not doing, uh, your cause or your, your, conversation you're part of the argument you're not doing it a, you're not doing it a service you're doing it a disservice um, because again the truth does not fear investigation um, so that, that's the thing that just makes me sad is that that there are I, I truly believe you know that there are racial injustices and I do think that they're just like anything if, if, if there are races amongst us in public why wouldn't there be in every aspect of everything you know obviously I don't, I don't think that's a huge percentage I do think that that truly racist people are extreme minority. Um, so I do think we've come a, such a long way. I think that if you look at society and how it was, I mean, if, if you look back in the 50s and 60s and 70s specifically, um, p 
people who were racist were emboldened. They, they were not afraid, afraid of, of speaking their hate. Um, and, and now you can see little pockets of it. But again, too, I think as the vast majority, I mean, even here living in a, in a you know, town in Montana, um, which is a you know a shadow, it's a teardrop in the ocean of where I used to live. Um, even then, I think the vast majority of people out here are just good, solid human beings who don't judge people by the color of their skin, but the content of their character. And so, you know, if I'm living in a small town in Montana, um, and I'm not seeing this immense hate, you know, I just, I don't think it's there. I do think that there's hate. And that's important to, to identify, because it's just a matter of realizing that there is a problem, but Again, it's important not to blow it out of proportion because if you say that that it's this huge, immense problem, and, and when people go looking for this problem and it's just not there, I mean, they find it. But you know, if if you were to make the statement that that half the country is racist, and then you go to you know, like I say, a small town in Montana, which is is more conservative, more um, you, you know, that mindset, and and you ask these people how they think about race and this and that, and and. You know, I, I think that you'd find out that the vast majority of people don't have hate in their heart for um, different people. And so, again, you would delegitimize de de uh, what you're trying to say, which would make it look like it didn't even exist. When, you know, if you said, you know, two and, you know, if 20% of the people are racist, I don't, I don't think that's the case. But if you were to make a, a smaller adjustment, if you were to say 10% 10 pe 10 of people are racist, That'd be a far more accurate description of what's true and so people would be more apt to agree with you even if they didn't necessarily witness it because it's, it's a more realistic number um and again so i think it's important to i mean it, it, to a certain degree it's that statement or that uh that uh, i don't know if it's a parable but it's, it's the boy who cried wolf where you know the story of the boy who cried wolf is he keeps you know screaming wolf wolf and the town comes to help him and there's nothing there and he, he keeps doing it he keeps doing it and finally, the, the town is fed up with him, and the, the wolf actually shows up, and he screams, that there's a wolf, and no one listens, and, and the guy's whole sheep flock is slaughtered. Um, so again, it's the point, it's like it actually does happen, there are actual cases in which a boy is crying wolf, and there is in fact a wolf, but if you fabricate it, if you, if you make it out to be more than it is, and aren't accurate, excuse me, accurate, accurately representing the issue, then you're going to make it seem like it isn't an issue. Um, and so that's why it's so important to denounce extremists is because they're delegitimizing these causes um, that I do think have, have just cause that do have um, you know, issues that do need to be addressed and, and changed. Um, but again, if, if you want to be you know, a, a, true, uh, a true part of the, of the solution, a true part of resolving this, then you need to do what's necessary, not what you think is, is, is justified to fabricate because when you fabricate, again, you're, you're removing the consistency. You're not able to address the issues because, again, you're tr constantly trying to um, backpedal on, on, again, too. You just you see so many stories where, where people just run with, with the uh, caption. They run with the, the white officer shoots a, a black victim and, therefore, because of those distinctions, because of those descriptions, the police officer's racist. When in fact, you know, we, we're not looking at all the facts. And, and, and it is very possible you look at incidences and confrontations and you certainly would say that, that at the very least certain officers do have racial prejudice. But again, if you just simply define the prejudice based on the color of their skin, you're delegitimizing the issue. You're delegitimizing it. And so no one's gonna take it seriously. And so it's just, it's really important to be accurate because, and again, there's nothing wrong, even like I'm saying with, with this incident where this one uh, Trump supporter was, was gunned down and, and didn't provoke anything. If something comes out where he did uh, provoke it, then that's something that myself and other people who are speaking up for, for the, this, this uh, appalling action against him, um, it would be important for us to make that distinction and say, hey, I was wrong based on what we know, you know, and, and so I have no, no issue with make people making those statements, with, with people hearing, um, you know, negative things and, and having them passed upon upon them, and then make forming an idea, forming an opinion on the issue. If someone describes this officer as gunning someone down, and then the person being, you know, uh, you know, completely innocent, and, and someone's appalled by that, I'm not going to condemn them because later we found out that they that the person actually provoked it. Um, and, and so again, there needs to be a point where you can 
um, make the form actions and form um, opinions based on what you're being received, but that has to evolve as information is, is released and evolve based on the, uh, the, the, the full uh, development of the story, not simply, like I said, the definition of who committed the act. We should condemn evil acts, not the source of their evil. Um, but yeah, so, you know, it, it's tough because I, I know the resistance to talking about issues like this because I don't want people to, to think that I'm insensitive or I don't care because I truly do. Um, and again, it, it's one of those things where on my father's side of my family, I'm Spanish and I'm African. And so I do have uh, a lot of family who are very, um, I don't want to say worked up because that makes it sound um, delegitimized. It, they're very <clears throat> emotionally and genuinely um, um, worried about everything going on. And especially, too, that's um, a, a video I want to talk about, about the, the mentality of, of the, the, the police and the, the victims. Um, just because, I've, again, I, I feel like when I'm talking about these issues, a lot of times people are making very good points, but they're not realizing that, that a lot of these points apply to both sides. Um, but that's a different conversation for a different day. But as always, good luck and good night.